Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, special mention goes to our speakers, Vice President Maria Leonor Robredo, Acting Chief Justice Antonio Carpio, and Ambassador Albert Del Rosario. And thank you to our guests um, for coming. My deepest gratitude to all of you who fixed your schedules disrupted by Henry. Thank you to the Ateneo School of Social Sciences, to Dean Nandi Alaba, and to the Rizal Library and its director, Von for hosting this book launch. Unfortunately, Nandi and Von couldn't join us today. And thank you to my publisher, the Ateneo University Press, to Karina Bolasco, Tina Castro, and Kevin D. Thank you to all those who contributed in various ways to bring this book to life. As you know, writing is a solitary endeavor, but getting it started, getting a book started and moving it is a valiant group effort. I was asked in a recent interview, why did you write this book? What drove you to do it? After the Philippines won its maritime case against China in 2016, friends suggested I should write a book about it. At first, I hesitated. I thought the scattered reefs, rocks, and islands in the South China Sea was an esoteric subject. Why should I care about these distant, remote features, some of which are even submerged during high tide? As a former Westcom commander told me in an interview, he said, you know we call these features luli, lulubug, militao. But as I read up on the case, I became quite interested and excited. Documents that were once classified were made public. These were submitted by the Philippines to the International Arbitral Tribunal. Memos, cables between the DFA and our embassy in Beijing from 1995 to 2013. Notes verbal, intelligence reports of the Navy, the Western Command of the Armed Forces, the Department of National Defense, Imagine all these documents in the public domain. What can be more thrilling to a journalist than to uncover secrets? Isn't that the reason for our being? Others will disagree. Then there's the story of the case itself. Why did the Philippines sue China? What were the hurdles that had to be overcome? And how did the Philippines frame the case and build it in such a compelling manner? And what was the outcome of the case and its impact? The transcripts of the oral hearings in The Hague, the Philippine Memorial, a memorandum explaining the case, the awards of the tribunal's decisions, gave answers to many of my questions. These materials are accessible reading to non-lawyers like me, and they open doors to a new field of knowledge. All this was fascinating treasure trove of our country's diplomatic history. There was humor and wit in the oral arguments, apart, of course, from the brilliant arguments of our lawyers. Going over these documents, immersing myself in UNCLOS, in the Manila-Beijing maritime dispute, was like cramming years of education into more than a year of reading, interviewing, and writing. But then the legal battle came to life before my eyes. So in this book, I tell the story of this victory that gave the country so much, but has not been given the national attention it deserved. The Philippines gained a maritime area larger than the total land area of the country, rich in resources. Yet these gains have been disregarded by the government in its rush to embrace China. On the second year anniversary of the Philippine victory, it is helpful to remind ourselves that ours was a landmark case, one that is for, forever engraved in the annals of public international law. The case is historic for four reasons. One, it's the first to interpret the UNCLOS definitions of rocks, islands, and low tide elevations. Second, it's the first case to be filed by a South China Sea claimant state against China. Third, it's the first time the Philippines sued a country and fourth, this is the first case to address the scope and application of the UNCLOS provision on protection 
and preservation of the environment. As the Philippine lawyer said, international environmental law was still an infant when UNCLOS was negotiated. So I think it's time we talk about a narrative that challenges the official story, a narrative that takes us back to the story of Philippines versus China, which reverberated in various parts of the world. It's time to go back to the almost two decades of back and forth with Beijing when our diplomats asserted Philippine rights over parts of the South China Sea, only to be rebuffed with a stock response that China had indisputable sovereignty over this vast area. It's time we go back to the decisions and to the award. It dawned on me as I was doing my research that fighting the case versus China was a very big deal. Taking this legal step meant confronting a mega power that had the might and resources to lash back at a small country such as ours. It meant uniting the whole of government and harnessing, harnessing talents to be part of this massive endeavor. It tested our country's strategic brain power and the quality of our public servants. I never thought that the Philippines could master such an impressive defense of our sovereign rights. The research was enormous covering a range of fields from hydrography to history. More than 100 maps were also included in the Philippine submissions. Part of my research took me to the front lines of the dispute in Pag-asa Island and Palawan, and Masinloc, Zambales, where geopolitics is personal to the fishermen. To The Hague, the setting of the arbitration, and to Washington, D.C., the offices of Foley Hogue, the Philippine lawyers. And as I learned, the rocks, reefs, and islands, which I initially thought were esoteric subjects, meant something more than their geographical location. They resonated with an idea close to the hearts of many Filipinos, asserting and fighting for a country's rights. So I think it's time we start a national conversation on how to move forward and use this legal victory and start a national conversation on this vital issue. Our experts, some of them are here today, have already put forth various ideas. And it's time that the government listen to the public as well as to our experts. Thank you very much for coming and good afternoon.